morning. Good, how are you? So good morning, everyone. <sighs> Looks like a few people didn't get the spring forward. <laughs> They're just staying in the cloud. <laughs> but they might show up later, and we'll be glad to see them when they arrive. <laughs> Y'all, I just have to tell you what happened this morning. You know, we always kind of kid about rehearsal being first service and then when y'all come at second service <laughs> because the spirit of the Lord just shows up well this morning we didn't stop rehearsal until what 10 20 and we started at 8 30 this morning so I'm just telling you we're all a little bit whacked <laughs> And we're asking the Lord for the greater things, aren't we? We've been just um, saying, Lord, we'll be more dignified than this. We've been saying that, but do we really mean it? I really mean it. <laughs> and so I'm telling you, we, we stepped into a realm in worship this morning because because we were willing and we stepped off the page of written music and stepped into a flow of the spirit that I don't think we have experienced yet as a team and so um, we were in the back there and I said I don't know where to start so start in the deep water so that's where we're gonna start is that okay so I can tell you this morning, there was such an intensity of the spirit up here that wasn't necessarily in the back of the room. So I want us to do, just to activate what has already been released in the room today. So I want us to all stand if you would. And um, <laughs> I don't know why there are certain areas that sometimes you, you walk into and you go, wow, there's power, there's the presence of the Lord that may not be in other areas. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because the angelic is up here or something. But So I want to just ask if we can do something kind of unusual. <laughs> can we just form a line around the outside and I want you to all walk past this area. And um, I feel like it's going to be an activation to receive what has already been released. And there will be no, huh. And that's right. You just go ahead and just hey, walk as many times as you want. If you walk the whole service, I don't care. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> we're free in this house. I'm telling you. And we're, I'm telling you, the Lord wants to whack us with his presence. Lord, we just release your glory, your new wine over my brothers and sisters right now.
distance Yes, Lord, we receive all that that has above and beyond what we can ever comprehend, ask, or think. For the glory of your name, Papa. Lord God Almighty. So this morning, we're going to take you to a new place. Do you want to go to a new place? The Lord took us to a whole other realm this morning, and we're in rehearsal. So if you want to go with us, come on. I know it's an act of faith. It's a step of faith to trust the Lord's going to take us together. There's a portal that's happening right here. And so I just want everything that the Lord is releasing and ordaining for this moment in time.
entering in this. It's no accident that we were led to go into this minor key. It's very Middle Eastern sounding in some respects. And so I'm saying, Lord, what are, what are you doing? Here, all of us, the Lord had taken us as an entire congregation and placed us over the nation of Iraq and Iran and the Muslim nations and we were releasing the sound of freedom over them. Freedom for the revelation of Jesus but also the freedom for the women who have been suppressed, persecuted. Their prayers were answered this morning because we, that's no small thing, y'all. What, what church would ever do that? <laughs> Not to put down anybody else, but I'm just telling you, it comes at a great cost. To not be afraid of where the Lord's going to take you. And what an honor it is. Wow. Our worship, we don't always have to understand what's going on here in our head. But if we yield our spirit to the Lord, He will take us wherever we're supposed to go. And this morning, what an awesome privilege to partner with you and all the angels who've been setting up this time in history for the freedom of those nations to be released from bondage of the enemy and of darkness. So Father, with our mind now and with the knowledge of what you're doing, we engage the natural realm with the Spirit, and we say yes and amen to everything that you're doing. Yes and amen. Let's say it. Yes and amen to everything that you're doing. Freedom for mankind. Freedom from every woman, child, and man. Freedom, Lord. Freedom in Jesus' name. Angels, we, we commission you right now to go and set up every man, woman, and child. Set them up to meet the Savior. Set them up. That not, not one would be lost in Jesus' name. Not one. No more. We're calling them in. We're calling them in for the kingdom of God. That they would make a decision. They have a choice to make. Will I or won't I? Set them up, angels, so they say, yes, I will choose Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Lord, those nations who've resisted you all these years because of religion will become the leading edge of your glory. Lord, only you can do that. Only you can turn around such darkness for your glory. So, Father, thank you for using us. Thank you, team, for being willing to step into the things of the Spirit on behalf of what God wanted to do this morning. Who knew? Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. laboring with us. Even this morning, I was sitting at the breakfast table. I was talking to you. <laughs> I said, open and Daniel, set me up today. Set us up for things of the kingdom. 
Because sometimes you know the Father's heart because you're more attentive sometimes than I am. So set me up to succeed, to win, to be victorious, to release your kingdom. And I was just having a conversation with him today. Whew. Thanks. Thank you, Father, for these beautiful creatures that you have sent to assist us in every way.
Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. We're not going to let any rocks out. Praise us, Lord. of extravagant praise. <laughs> Freedom in the house of the Lord. Freedom over God's people. The captives are free. Those in darkness have seen a great light. Lord, your light is exploding in the earth, exploding on the scenes of darkness, wreaking havoc on your enemy. Glorify yourself, Lord. Do your business, Lord. We say yes and amen. We lift your name up high in the earth. May your enemies be scattered. Good church, drink deep, drink deep, drink deep. Yeah, just keep that cup open because I feel like the Lord just keeps pouring and you're like, man, it's just so full, but it just keeps pouring over and it's just so good. Oh, and then there's a bowl under the cup and then there's a basin under the bowl and then there's a pool under the basin and the Lord's just saying, you just think you have a cup, but you have a bowl and you have a basin and you have a pool. And the river that flows from my throne flows from you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So, Lord, we drink deep. We drink deep of you. Such a Jesus buzz right now. I bind up the spirit of offense. Where is he? The Lord has defeated him too. <laughs> Joy in the house of the Lord. Joy. Unspeakable joy forevermore. Breakthrough, Lord. Thank you for breakthrough for us, for me, for this house, for the next level. Lord, we keep thinking, wow, how can there be another level? He goes, because I'm just that good. I'm infinite. He's infinitely good. So, Lord, we just glorify your name and responding to you, Lord. And so many of the Psalms are filled with like, step into joy. Proclaim it with joy. Shout for joy. Lifting up your hands in the sanctuary. Dance and praise and all the trees of the fields will clap their hands. What must that look like? Like last night during the storm, sometimes storms don't scare me because I think nature is just praising God and it's raising a ruckus for the glory of God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> uh, just keep soaking that in. If you got to keep taking a deep breath and going, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Some of you are feeling joy like you haven't felt it before, like you got a joy, some joy juice, you know, those little boxes of juice that you give your kids. Now God said, here, have a little joy juice this morning. Hoo -hoo. Yeah, Lord, I needed that. I needed a little laughter and happy tears and the overwhelming 
glory of the Lord being poured out over his people as, in, as he inhabits their praises. So the Lord says it's good. Just keep drinking as we go. Wow, Lord. Thank you. So this is so God. I really like having this table here because I am so weak right now with the presence. It's just wonderful to have this to lean on. But Ken just, just handed this down. Ken runs our video. Thank you, Ken. Okay, you know, we went into that whole thing about singing and interceding through our praises over the nations, the Middle Eastern nations. Guess who's watching online? Dubai, France, and the Philippines are watching this morning. They're being changed by your worship. So this is no small thing. <laughs> so Lord, we bless. Uh, the Lord you, has Lord. said that quite often to us. Um, it's how do I how do I emphasize the importance of us blessing the earth and uh, avoiding the politics of hate and the politics. We, we know nations. You know, Jesus said the nations will war against nations and you see the news and you think of enemies and it can stir up very negative stuff and the Lord's saying I need my people to move in the opposite spirit I need my people to pray for their enemies your perceived enemy doesn't mean we don't defend and do right things by the nation I'm not against that but the whole spiritual dynamic is for us to bless and encourage each other and to unite and be one people especially the church praying that for the nation is divided as divided as it seems i'm just speaking blessing into the nation but even in these places where the lord is showing up in mysterious ways other international communities and revivals happening the underground church in china is exploding and and in the middle east yes we've been in dubai and kuwait and and just blessing the church there but god's showing up in iraq and iran and there's that God's exploding on the scene of God's people pray and bless and even when you see your enemies in the Taliban I'm just blessing them like That's Lord right. Jesus just break yeah, through Lord. all the lies of the Amen. enemy I'm not speaking judgment or curses we speak ah Lord just break through every darkness send servants yeah. missionaries yes but maybe God himself yeah. the Lord is showing up in dreams and and angels and whatever the Lord, if we just agree with God to bless our enemies, we can see a level of peace we've never seen before. It's not going to be done by governments and war and legislating. It just doesn't, it's not going to be lasting. It's got to be something in the spirit. So guard your heart. Just uh, the last encouragement. And that's why people are watching and they're tuning in and God's just showing up and God's using everything at his disposal you know partnering with his people to see his glory explode in the earth so yes Lord Connie has one more piece of this I love it because we all need each other for the pieces <laughs> because we all see in part and know in part but this was beautiful and I was thinking of something else have you ever driven in your car and a song comes on and you go, that's my song. Turn it up, crank it up. That's what he just showed me. But um, while the worship was going on and the Middle Eastern sounds, I saw the salvage edges, which seamstresses will know what that is. And I saw a red thread going through the edges. <clears throat> And what he spoke to my heart was that that song was ancient that they tapped into. And it went all the way back to him. And that song is the song that the folks online in those countries will hear. And it draws them to him. He's willing to offend our minds, Americans, to get to the heart of those he loves. 
So if you were offended at that, he doesn't care. <laughs> oh, and, and I did see uh, one last thing. I saw um, the Lord's hand in cursive writing the name Aliana. It was A-L-I-A-N-A. And he said, I love to sing your name. You know that song? I love to sing your name. I love to, yeah. He, he was saying he loves to sing her name. He loves to write her name. And I saw her in a city, and it felt like it was me, and I saw the skyline. And he said, I have put you as a voice in the city. Don't be afraid. I have put you as a voice in the city. And they will hear you, and you're not drowned out. And they will hear you. And he loves you so much. Wow. Thank you, Connie. <laughs> wow. Do we have an Aliana in the room? Alana? We got something else. We have a young couple that we're friends with. They spent a three week honeymoon in our house about three years ago. They are. Um, traveling to the Middle East, to Israel, and to um, Syria in the next couple of weeks to go on a mission trip, or mission field, and their youngest daughter's name is Eliana. Wow. Eliana. So her voice is going to be heard. Wow. Wow. Cool. Hmm. Ah, uh, my, my. <laughs> that is amazing. So I just thank you all for being willing. And I want to thank you all online for joining us and receiving and participating, wow, in what God is doing. Uh, well, we uh, do have a special word, another special word. There's been special words all morning. But Jerry, um, we're just such so honored to have a, a father in the house. He's a father of the city, a father of fathers, and we're honored to have him in this house. And he has a timely word for us today that's going to help us on our journey of the things we are already experiencing. And we just welcome him this morning. Come on. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'll see if I can come. <laughs> it's going to be hard to come down out of the whack. Is that all right if you're here, Stan? Oh, my goodness. Hey, I do have a passage in Scripture that might help us make this transition because I'm weak. I really am weak. <laughs> Uh, you know, I love the fact that God gives us new expressions of his word. This is the Passion Translation. Some of you have heard, but can I read to you just a little bit of Psalm 23? The Lord is my best friend and my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. He tracks me and takes me to an oasis of peace, the quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life and opens before me the pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along in his footsteps in righteousness so I can bring honor to his name. Lord, even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me, for you already have. You remain close to me and lead me through it all the way, and your authority is my peace and my strength. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I'll never be lonely, for you are near. You become my delicious feast, even when the enemies dare to fight. You anoint me with the fragrance 
of the Holy Spirit. And give me all that I can drink of you until my heart overflows. So why would I fear the future? For your goodness and your love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence to be forever with you. Thank you. The passion translation. Wow. Isn't that good? We're having a hard time transitioning here today because it's been so good, but. <laughs> I'm serious. I went to heaven last night. I don't know if it's going to go or not. Maybe it will. I went to heaven last night. I went there again this morning, and it was glorious. Now, I have never said that in the whole time I've ministered since 1972. I don't know how many sermons I've preached. I've never said that to start out a sermon. <laughs> Oh, well, okay. Uh, I know some of you know we have a conference coming up this week, and uh, there'll be at least 350 seats filled uh, with people who are hungry for understanding and experiencing more of the Father's heart. And even everything I say today will reflect on the fact that we're passionate to experience his heart. We want to be where he is. And so that's why this message, some of you know that I went over to Wales to spend some time with one of the speakers over there, and um, Justin Abraham, after three years, said yes, he would come, so I'm, gla I'm grateful. But when I went over, uh, the, the conference that I went to, I got the title of this message, The Wine is Alive. And you might remember we already touched on that couple of weeks back, part one, <laughs> and this message is really just an on-ramp to kind of confirm to a lot of us where we're going and what we're experiencing is good, and for some who are just watching and kind of curious, then it's to, I never want anyone to be left behind. I guess that's just part of the shepherd in me. I want to encourage you to open your heart in the things that I want to share. You know, we have a lot of filters in the way we've experienced God. And so because of that, I propose to you God is removing these filters. And he wants us to move together, not, not separate, but together. So if you have checks or reservations about what I say, that's okay. We can still fellowship and grow and learn. But we're walking in a new era with him, new territory. And um, for some of us, you might like my subtitle for this sermon. The subtitle is, God, I don't know where I'm going. Is it okay? <laughs> I thought we had to have a subtitle. So why is this emphasis on heaven? And it's because... Heaven is your home. We're only talking about our home, where God's called you to be. Here we go. We did explode. <laughs> and in truth, you have access to your home right now. You have access. And that's what we talked about, that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus made a way for you. Now. And so he's opening up the heart of his people. And I think that some of you will even have your heart open more, even through this message. As we pray together, I want to speak directly about some things we haven't talked about. But I think God will help us. Let's pray.
those of you who hear this message and don't understand, you can pray with me. God, I don't understand. I don't get it. But would you open my heart? Would you open my eyes to your understanding? <laughs> if there's a block there, would you remove it? Help me understand. And if these things are from you, I want you to show me. I don't understand all of this stuff, but I want to. Amen. For those watching, we started out, when we started this series, talking about the wine being alive, that it's actually alive. Wine is evolving. It's a live entity. And instead of something getting rotten and useless like a grape, it actually ferments and provides provides for us in a wonderful drink that's healthy for your heart and brings joy and light in your eyes. <laughs> Amen? And it ought to be that way in the spirit as well, right? Anything that we see in the natural, we should be able to magnify in the spirit. And, of course, in the Bible, it's symbolic of the fullness of joy. And I said this the last time, and I want to repeat it. It's just that pastor in me to say that I really do care that you understand and that you're not, because of fear and confusion, pushed away. I want you to know it's okay to take the time that you need to understand the things of God. So I want to affirm those of you who are encountering heaven, and I want to say to you that if you're just starting this process, it's okay. We've got lots of time to learn how to drink. And as a shepherd, I want you to drink the best. I mean, the very best. So uh, as I start out, I want to say that there's a difference between revelation and mystery. Because um, when we take of the communion, and, and we won't be taking it this morning, but normally when we will take of the communion, and we're doing it in remembrance of him, but for some of us, we're understanding there's a transference that's happening, a DNA transference, that the very life of God through the wine and through the bread is rearranging, breaking the power of iniquitous DNA in us, transferring life into us. Now, that is a mystery. And you do need revelation for that. Justin Abraham says we need infused knowledge. And we may use that word more often here because when you think of taking, say, a tea bag and putting it in hot water, and it pulls the essence of that tea out into the water, and then you have tea. That's called infusion. How you can learn the ways of God is that the more you spend with Him in intimacy, and it's all about the Father here, then the knowledge of the Father can be infused into you without a lot of effort. You don't have to understand Hebrew or the Greek or any of these kind of things because God can give you direct revelation or infusion to understand the kingdom of God. But we have to go beyond the first layer of interpretation, and so... What that means is, is that the experiences that we have in God will always force us to rethink our theology. And we don't grow without experience, but we do not evolve in our theology by just reading pages. We've got to have encounter. And through encounter and through infusion, then we begin to see things in the mysterious realm we would have known. I mean... These are the unseen things that we're pressing in toward. And I'm going to give you a passage. Come back to some of the passages we used the last time. So I would conclude to say in this message, I want to convince you and persuade you that to know him more, you have to know more of him. And so we're going to focus on some of the, the concealed mysteries that we find in Scripture. And I know that for some of you, this is a transitional seed. Maybe for others, you'll go, well, that's really good for you, and you'll go away, and nothing has changed. 
But religion and natural reasoning is often our enemy because it blinds us to the revelation that God wants. You remember when some of you first received the gifts of the Spirit and you prayed in a, uh, a heavenly language? Maybe it seemed weird right at first. Maybe you thought in your own mind, what am I doing? Am I making this up? It didn't make practical sense. And so when you first engaged in it, it was natural to kind of doubt it. But the more that you pressed in and just relaxed and let the Holy Spirit pray or speak through you. And by the way, I'm going to pray again today for anyone who has a desire to receive a prayer language at the end. Because it's a wonderful gift. I don't know how you can live without it. I don't. Paul says, hey, I'm going to boast a little. I pray in tongues more than all of you. He wasn't ashamed of it. And I would like to be like Paul. I would like to say that it's so much a part of my everyday life as I breathe the Word of God through the Spirit. And so if you haven't received, you can. But right at first, it's natural to doubt. And then you lean in with a tiny bit of faith, and then, bam, it just starts to flow, and you don't even think much about it. And you can change dialects and languages and the tongues that are unknown and the tongues of the angels and don't even realize you're doing it because it doesn't have to be the same every single time. So I want to help you strengthen your secret history with God. And you do that to having an open heart and letting the Holy Spirit give you revelation or infused knowledge of what he's doing. So I actually have a mandate to do this, and I found it, and I was so glad because I found it in Micah chapter 4, 2, and let me read that with you. Micah 4, 2, and many nations, Gentiles it actually says, will come and say, come up, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. So as a Gentile, I'm being given a commission here to say, come, let us go up. So I'm being more intentional about this than I normally would be. Things shifted inside of me, and I realized it's part of what I'm called to do, to encourage you as a Gentile (laughs) or as the nations, to come up into the mountain of the Lord, into his. And, you know, the thing that has helped me is understanding that God has given us physical senses that correspond with our spiritual senses. Now, a lot of people think you have to have a, a special spiritual anointing to be a seer. Um, you You don't have to, because I don't honestly believe anyone's disqualified, if you know the Lord, to see into the heavenly realms. I really think that it's for everyone. I don't see anywhere it's mentioned in the scripture that it's even the gift of seeing in the spirit. Now, there's the discerning of the spirit, but every one of us have a right as sons, and you know, that means sons and daughters, but sons to see what the Father wants us to see. And you can use all of the senses. Now, when a baby is born, right at first, that eyesight that the baby has cannot focus clearly on everything around it. It's blurry, but then as it grows and it learns to focus, then it can bring in and develop the ability to see. And that's very much like it is in the things of the, the Spirit, whether it be by the spiritual gifts or moving up into heavenly places. It can be done through practice and focus. And I used several passages last week, or the last time I spoke, that I think we just kind of flip them up on the screen. Again, the key here is to fix your eyes on things above. Colossians 3, 2. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. In other words, that means you've got to be intentional to glue, to stick, to anchor yourself to these things that God's revealing to us. 2 Corinthians 4.18, So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary and inferior, a lower reality. 
That's hard, isn't it? Because we're so comfortable with this reality, and yet this is not as real as the other reality. But we haven't learned to focus our eyes. We're still babes in some ways in this. The unseen is eternal. And the seen is temporal. Colossians 3.1, we read, Since then you've been raised with Christ, set your heart on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind, focus your mind on things above, not on earthly things. And then I ask the question, how much of your everyday life are you focusing on the unseen? We can get so busy doing an everyday routine that we can go a long time and just not pay any attention to the unseen. It has to be intentional. So God is intentionally blurring the boundaries so that we are kind of caught between this paradox of the seen and the unseen. Now, here's a principle that I want you to hold into, and I think this will help us on not just this message, but uh, a future message on the wine is alive, and that's this. You get what you behold. In other words, if I focus and I give my attention to heaven, that's what I'm going to get. If I focus and give my attention just to the temporal and the earthly, then that's what I get. You get what you behold. It's just like where our dear friends here taught on healing. We saw an outbreak of healing in this house because... We get what we focus on. So if you really are interested in transitioning into more of an understanding and experience of the heavenlies, you have to focus on that. And it's not weird. It's not crazy. It's just part of our walk. It's part of one of the spokes on the wheel. I mean, all these, most of my sermons and all my pastorate has been on the practical, how to live your life effectively as a Christian, how to walk it out. Never did a whole lot of deep theological teaching because that doesn't change people. It's the heart that changes when we have an encounter with God and realize what he expects from us. Now, I want to come back again and say you, every single one of you, have access. It's not something that, again, is just for a few people. And it's because... And it's because of this passage in Hebrews 10 that I read last time. You have access to the things of God. In other words, he's making it a personal invitation. He's inviting you to be here right now. Now, Hebrews 10, 19, and I'll read it again. This is probably the last of the verses I used last time. But here we are. Now we are brothers and sisters in God's family because of the blood of Jesus. He welcomes us to come into the most holy sanctuary in the heavenly realm. I mean, how much clearer can it be? He's inviting us to come in boldly and without hesitation. Verse 20 says, For he has dedicated a new life-giving way for us to approach God. For just as the veil was torn in two, Jesus' body was torn open to give us free and fresh access to him. No longer do we have to keep the law and sacrifice of of goats and sheep. We don't have to do those things to have access to God. We do it through Christ Jesus, the last blood sacrifice, the sacrificial lamb. And because of that, we have access now into the heavenly realms. We have a rite of passage to go through the veil. Now, that was hard for the disciples even back in that time to understand. And you cannot understand this with natural understanding. It has to be inductive. You have to, you know, allow the Lord to open your eyes. In Matthew 4, 17, Jesus said these words. They didn't get it. He said, the heaven is at hand. I'm saying this to you today. Heaven is here. It's at hand. It's closer than the air you breathe. And if this interests you, then what's the next step except, Lord, show me how. John 12, 26 says, 
Jesus said, if a man wishes to be my servant, let him follow me. Where I am there too shall my servant be. So if I want to be where Jesus is, then I've got to learn to engage and go past these natural barriers in the earthly seen realm and move into the unseen. Ephesians 2, 4 through 7, because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It's by grace you've been saved. And verse 6, and God raised us up with Christ and seated with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. You are right there at this very moment. But I really want to expand on this from the Mirror Bible, which I don't have with me today, but uh, Francis de Trois really does capture the thought here. Let me read it to you again in his translation, the Mirror Bible. As much as we were co-included in his death, we are co-included in his resurrection. We are also elevated in his ascension to be equally present in the throne room of the heavenly realm where we are co-seated. Now, picture being equally present in the heavenlies. So we're fully represented in Christ. He goes on and he again gives some language <laughs> to this scripture. He says, our joint position in Christ defines us. I want you to hear that. That is powerful. Your joint position in Christ right now in heavenly places should define you, not what you do here on this earth. I've stopped asking people, what do you do for a living? I just look them in the eyes and go, who are you? And where are you seated right now? What defines you? I've tried that. It confuses some people because then they go and say, well, I, do, I work at the bank. or I said, I don't really want to know that right now. Who are you in Christ? <laughs> you see, when we understand this, then all striving ceases to perform and be liked by people or be acknowledged. All my life, I was trying to get people to value me by what I did. That's over. It's over when you understand what Jesus has done for us. He goes on. He says, here we are now revealed in Christ. Now, you got to hear this. And if you don't get hit by the bliss, I don't know what will happen to you. He says. Oh, my gosh. He says. Here we are now, revealed in Christ in the highest position of bliss. Nothing can distract us from the extravagant love in Jesus. And then listen to this. Now for endless time, God can exhibit the trophy of the wealth of his grace. You're the trophy of the wealth of his grace demonstrated in his kindness toward Jesus. The excessive Evidence of the success of the cross. You, my friends, washed by the blood, given access into the heavenly places, you, it says, are the excessive evidence of the success of the cross. It was not in vain. What he did was perfect, complete. Like when we take the supper, I go, this is the full deal. This is the full meal. We don't have to have anything added to this. It's done. It's finished. Yes. Woo! Yes. Hallelujah! <laughs> oh, get some understanding of this. It will wreck you. <laughs> 
Well, my friend Steve's probably watching this morning, and Steve, you gave me this one. You said that the frequency of the love of the Father is an indication that what you're having is a true encounter. A lot of people think, well, I don't want to get misled. I don't want to make mistakes. I don't want to get in trouble. Well, you're going to get into the heart of the Father, and I'll tell you, that will convince you of how loved you are, how special you are. And I know Steve talks about this a lot, that the encounter with the Father's heart will show you that it's a true encounter. If you feel condemned, it's not from the Father. If you're not sure of your stature or your placement in God, it's not the Father. Because the more you get into the Father's heart, the more loved you feel. And, and, and seriously, you can't even function sometimes when you get hold of that truth. And Justin puts it this way, and you'll probably hear him say this at the conference. He said, and he said this on a lot of his teachings, whatever I receive... And hold in my heart, if it has weight here, it'll have weight there. Whatever I perceive and hold in my heart, if it has weight there, it'll have weight here. So that's why we want to really encourage you to not be afraid of moving in to encountering God in heavenly places. And if you will hold it in your heart, if you let it have weight and you lean into it with desire. <laughs> I'm going to be bold enough to say you'll encounter it faster than you realize. It's not that hard to step into the next room. Everyone can do it. So as I try to wind this down a little bit, let me ask this question. Where do you think this is all going? And to me, that matters a lot. I love the bliss. I love the joy. But I want to see... What is God really after? And I think we can find this in Revelation 1, 5 through 6. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be all glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. We have a hard time getting our mind wrapped around that he's called us to be kings and priests. But as I said the last time, in Christ you always have access in every realm, every place, every dominion. And as kings, you can actually function in those realms. And I think that's what he wants us to learn how to do. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. Here is another passage from Zechariah. And I love this passage because what it says is that the Lord did not forget his original plan. He said, this is what the Lord God Almighty says. If you walk in obedience to me and keep my requirements, then you'll govern my house, have charge of my courts, and I'll give you a place among those standing here. Now, folks, that's what it's about. He's raising up priests and kings to function with him in his house over the nations. And if you know that every time you get an encounter with God, that that's where it's headed, then you won't want to leave that encounter. You're going to fall in. for being born there was a destiny on a destiny on us when we were created and it's because he's looking for sons who will be after his own son and his own likeness and he's given us free access to rule and reign with him that's an amazing thing why would he ever do that with just flesh and blood and dust it's it's because we're not human that's why we're beyond human. We're spiritual beings that he is invested in and is training and equipping us for the days that are ahead. And it's not about 
the body that we live in, this, this human shell or how it looks or the problems we're having with it, staying healthy and all of these things. It's the spirit inside of us that's alive. And he has called us to be kings and priests. Second Timothy 2.12 says, if we patiently endure pain, and I think some of you know what I mean, as you get a little older and the joints are hurting. Well, other kinds of pain, just the trials and the turmoil of life. He says, if we patiently endure pain, we shall also share his kingship, and we will rule and reign with him. Now, Paul Keith Davis is coming to speak at the conference as well, and he, in his writings, have talked about us becoming oracles of God. Now, there's a passage in Jeremiah 23 that talks about God's attitude toward false prophets, those who would pretend to be oracles. But Paul says that God, Paul Keith, he he really believes there will be a day where the oracles of God will be called upon to speak the word of the Lord into the situations of our nation, in our governments, in our lives. In other words, we will speak with such authority that we can actually change DNA and bring things to pass. In other words, can you imagine something like this? Someone comes up and they're not bringing attention to themselves, but they would say something along the line of, I've stood in the council of God and, and just the very vibration of their voice, it doesn't just transform, it changes the DNA of that person's body or that situation that seems to be going on a one-way ticket to hell. And just by speaking the word and the vibrations of the voice of that king or priest would switch that whole dynamic, switch that whole atmosphere. And folks, I believe with all my heart it's already started. That's why when you hear some people saying that they spoke and Carl and Leanne have done this, spoke to the storms, and they've gone around their house. I've done this too. Why cannot we expect that God would give us the ability to change things in the natural when we're people of the supernatural? I mean, we're supernatural beings having an earthly experience. Not human beings having a heavenly experience on occasion. So we have this thing called reconstitution. We can actually reconstitute that which is dead and make it alive. Just like in the old Roadrunner movies, he would drop a drop of water on it, and bam, you know, the Acme box would appear, and there was a motorcycle inside, and he could go running off. And that's what reconstitution is. It's taking one little drop of water and bam, it blows up into what it's supposed to be. God wants to do the same with us. That one word, one act of obedience would reconstitute that which is dead and bring it to life. Imagine the joy of living that way all the time. And we will. We are. And that we could say, stand up, be healed in Jesus' name. Stand up. You're seen right now by the power of God because I'm speaking from heaven down. Stand up. That that cancer is dropping off of you even now. That's the way it should be. And I heard this the day as we were worshiping. He said, Jerry, the faceless will become the familiar. Because we look at the teams of people around the world in pain and suffering and sickness. And it can become a blur after a while. I mean, you think about it, you've gotten to know some of the people in this room and you have a familiar face and it's a joy to see them and embrace. I watched the hugs this morning. I watched the familiarity. But God has not forgotten one single person that was created in his image. And as sons and as kings and priests, that which seems unfamiliar will become familiar to us. I'm going to know you in advance when I see you walk up. I'm going to go, I saw you last night, and the Lord has this word for you, and now live. I am looking for this day 
and I'm expecting this day, and I'm walking in this day right this moment. Sixty-nine times in the New Testament, it says we are in him. We need to live that way. I'm in him. I'm in him. (laughs) I love that passage. If you exercise your spirit, you'll see in the spirit realm. You'll begin to see in the spirit. You can tell your spirit to cover an area. It's like we heard from Tim Bentz. Our spirit is alive. It will do what we command it to do by the spirit of God. Not much different than receiving words of knowledge. You get impressions. The next time I share it, I'd like to go in that more detail about how you actually lean in and become more familiar with the unseen and know that you're functioning in that way. I want to say that I'm believing that God is going to infuse knowledge in us in the days ahead that's going to blow your mind. Uh, A few days ago, I had a chance to be with Gil Hodges on this Kingdom Talks on the Internet. And the the night before, I had been in a heavenly encounter with God, and I got an impression, which I'll just give you a snap picture of because I'll develop it for the next time. But I saw myself where glory becomes glory, glory to glory, we're being changed, we're being transformed. And I wondered what that meant, and I saw this picture. And the picture was that the Lord was transprinting the kingdom of God upon our everyday lives. And he was blurring the boundaries through this transprint. And the word I used as I did this interview with him, that... I showed him, um, I said, in my memory, I remember Disney came out with these early Mickey Mouse cartoons, and they would take a, a piece of acetate, and they would draw a background on that acetate. Then they'd take another piece of clear acetate and draw Mickey Mouse on it, and then they would lay them on top of one another, and in a sense, there was a transprinting or an infusion that was going on where you couldn't really tell that it wasn't all done together. You couldn't tell that one was separate because they blended together and became as one. That's what God's intention for us is. That these lines are so blurred that we're not sure if we're in the heavenly realm right now or in a physical realm, but we're functioning in the kingdom in obedience as kings and priests. And this transprinting, It's taking such effect in us that we feel much more that we're spiritual beings than we do that we're physical beings. And I'm going to ask the Lord to develop that more, but I know that was going in just for a moment of time in the Father's chambers and having that thought transprinted on my mind. I go, that makes sense. You lay these on top of each other. They blend and blur together so that you don't even know which is which. Does that make sense? Now, that's what I'm talking about. That's the kind of revelatory function that the Spirit is calling us to. That we'll just see and go, aha, now I get it. So that's what you're after, Father. So you see, with these thoughts in mind, we should be drawn to pressing in by faith, not by hard work or efforts, but just simply relaxing and letting him take you where he will. And it gets to the point where I have to ask him to just slow down a little bit because I don't know if I can breathe. (laughs) There was a couple of months ago when this started really intensifying that I thought, what are they going to say if my body blows up and all the parts hit all the walls? Because it felt that intense inside. There was that holy, wonderful tension between one piece of acetate and another because they were being put on top of each other. Oh, Lord, help us. Let's pray. 
Lord, I pray that you help us engage in this spiritual world and that we will start actually looking for your hand and the things that are in the unseen. It might be images. It might be scenes. We need to learn to engage. You might see a door and go over to it and see myself opening and walking through that gate because I'm entering into this realm. Lord, that's how simple it should be. The power of imagination by faith, the power of faith to see the unseen, using all of our senses, the smell. The, I remember, Lord, even as a child, I did not know what to do with the fact that I would always see colors and lights, and I'd smell smells and hear bells, and, <laughs> and I did not know where it was going, and I didn't know who I could talk to about it. Many of us in this room had similar experiences, and you've taken us from those things that were confusing to making them common but holy. We were never treated as common, but we want to treat it as the active Christian experience, not the radical experience. This is just what Christians do that have been in, intertwined into your life. Through your blood, Jesus. We should be functioning in these realms just as easily as, as we breathe the air. And I pray that our faith would rise up to meet this invitation and say yes. And say yes. Lord, as we do take communion today, I, I pray that you would open our, the eyes of our understanding to see the power of the shed blood. And the power of the bread, the body that was broken. And I'm asking you in Jesus' name to destroy all iniquitous DNA with us, in us, and help us to align ourselves completely with the light, the sound, and the frequency is heaven. The light, sound, and frequencies of heaven are accessible even as we take communion, and we do this often, to go through the veil that's open now for us, to step into the assignment you have for us as kings and priests. And we're so grateful. I would have many times in the past said, unworthy, I'm so unworthy. How could you ever use someone like me? And you told me, I don't want to ever hear you say that again. You're my son in whom I'm well pleased. And I trust you that you'll handle these things in a way that would honor the Father and the Son. We're part of your family. And we're just going to do it your way and your protocol. give you all the praise and all the glory. As the worship team comes or the musicians come, let's prepare our hearts. Well, I believe we do. I believe we do. So, it just appeared by the Spirit. <laughs> That's right. So, would you just stand and let's just begin to make our way to the communion table. It has been prepared for us by the Lord himself. <laughs> Hallelujah. And give thanks to the Lord for he is good. That he's offered us all of these treasures, these wonderful things. In Jesus' holy name. For those of you who are watching, don't forget that at the well we appreciate your prayers and your support. You'll see on the screen in a few moments where you can send in your gifts and your support, your tithes. If you don't have a church and you feel like you want to tithe to the well, you just text it, 615-567-5075 if you'd like. Or you can also go online 
all of those, by the way, are tax exempt. If you do it through the phone or you mail it in, if you're online, it's all tax exempt through ACT International. <coughs> Fathers, we take this bread, as we take this wine, we are asking that you let us discern with infused knowledge the power in Jesus' name of what you have finished for us through the shed blood of Jesus, through his broken body. He did it willingly. He did it with his whole heart. And in it right now, there's healing being manifested in this room. Even now, if there's sickness in your body, the Spirit of God rises up over that sickness and says it's gone by the power of Jesus' name. Migraine headaches, someone who's been struggling with some arthritic pain, even this very smor this morning, I say be gone in the authority of Jesus' name. Someone who's been having tension over the left eye, there's been like a, a pain in your head, a headache over the left eye in particular. Be gone in Jesus' name. Let healing flow in this house. Someone's had a vein on their neck that's been painful. It's actually enlarged. And the Lord just heals that now and brings that pain level down and restores you to normality in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Irritable bowel syndrome, be gone in Jesus' name. Toxicity, flush out and be gone in Jesus' name. High blood pressure, come down now in the authority of Jesus. Be gone in Jesus' name. Normality through the shed blood and the body being broken for us. As we ingest it, we say, right now we engage uh, the DNA of God, the health and the strength and the life that he intended for us. In Jesus' name. Spinal compression right now. Where you're struggling with your back in a particular area, there's a compressed vertebrae and because of that nerve endings are being compromised in the name and the authority of Jesus we break the power of that pain you stop now in the authority of Jesus name you're not welcome here be healed in Jesus name including the sciatic nerve that flares up from time to time. That's done. Finish it. In Jesus' name. So, Lord, as we take now, we eat. We say your finished work through being brutalized in your body, nails being driven in, spears in your side. All that you did so freely for us, we accept it now as the cost you paid for our healing, our total healing in Jesus' name. So we drink of the cup right now in the name and the authority of Jesus. My sins, past, present, and future are over. They're done with. There's nothing you remember against me. In Jesus' name, nothing that the enemy has a hand on, we give you the praise, Lord. All glory and praise. And also let this extend toward our households, husbands and wives and children that are in suffering and pain right now. You say, our household will be cleansed. In the name of Jesus and by the power of your blood, leukemia be gone in Jesus' name. 
a regular heartbeat and a, a rhythm in the heart. All the vows come into alignment, into sync, into balance the way God intended you to be. In Jesus' name. Thank you right now, Lord. Thank you, in Jesus' name. It's good. Be blessed and love on one another. In Jesus' name. Before you go, if anyone wants personal prayer, we'll be more than happy to have prayer at the prayer tree over here. I used to call it the prayer tree. And if you'd like to receive your spiritual gift and pray in the spirit, I'd be happy to pray with you. And they'll be released in you. In Jesus' name. Of course, our offering buckets are here. If you haven't given and you want to, sow into the well. We're grateful. Thank you for coming. Bless you.